Recently, I went down to Durham, North Carolina to the ShopBot factory to pick up my new ShopBot desktop CNC machine and get some uh, great instruction from a guy named TJ Christensen. At the end of the uh, two days of instruction, TJ helped me load the ShopBot onto the pickup truck. I drove it home and using my tractor got it into the shop, onto the lift, uh, on its way to its permanent location. Uh, this video is going to uh, bring you along on the ride for my first uh, use of the ShopBot machine. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to my latest video about my brand new ShopBot desktop. Uh, it's a CNC router. I picked it up last week. Uh, when I drove down to Durham, North Carolina to the ShopBot factory. I had two days of training and picked up the machine, brought it home, and I've been setting it up and I wanted to go over with you uh, the setup. Uh, first of all, the desktop machine is a 24 by 18 bed size, uh, so it fits on a desk, and you notice I actually have a desk that it's on. Uh, and uh, it's driven by a computer, uh, software the ShopBot gives you uh, with a machine to uh, tell the, uh, the machine how to, how to cut. Uh, in this particular application, I've set up a vacuum hose. I made a little uh, uh, stand here on the side of the desk that I can attach the hose to. And right now, I temporarily have my Bosch vacuum cleaner attached. I've got a, a fine Turbo 3 vacuum on order, so it'll give me really good suction. And it uh, also, the fine has a 2-inch hose, which, or it's actually 2 and a quarter inch hose, so it'll fit over this 2-inch uh, uh, spout, I think. We'll find out for sure next week when it arrives. Anyway, I've got the vacuum hooked up and uh, I'm going to go through some of the procedures with this as I uh, learn how to use it. You can watch me learn. When you get a new desktop, the machine comes fully assembled, so there's, there's really no assembly required. Uh, you set it on your desk or your bench and you use some little leveling feet here to get it nice and uh, stable so it doesn't rock. Uh, the desk collection uh, was kind of a little design of my own. Just, uh, you know, I attached a 2x4 to the side of the desk and used a 3 8 inch rod that I had laying around, bent it so that it goes into a hole in the top of the 2x4 and can move around a little bit. Fits into the spout here, so as the as the uh, carriage, you know, the gantry and so forth moves, the hose goes with it. As I said, the ShopBot is driven by a computer program, so there's there's actually three separate computer programs that you get with the machine. The one that's on the screen right now is the actual driver. It's the ShopBot software that actually drives the the tool. When the tool cuts, we call that a tool path. And it's actually a computer file called a two tool path file, and it simply has instructions to tell the cutter where to go. I want to insert here that my terminology was a little loose when I filmed this video. The file is actually called a part file, and it contains all the instructions for the tool path that you want the router to follow. To make that toolpath program, you can use a, uh, the second program the ShopBot gives you called PartWorks. And PartWorks is uh, made by Vetrix Software, and uh, it allows you to draw. It's a very easy drawing program. You can draw what you want in, on the computer screen and then save it as a toolpath file. And then the toolpath file you then open with the ShopBot software. It reads a toolpath file says, oh, okay, you want to make a sign that says Andy. Fine. And then it cuts the sign. Of course, you got to put the material on, attach it down. So that's kind of the basic hookup, and it all goes through a cable into USB port on the computer. Pretty easy to hook up. Now, I'm not at the sign making point yet. What I'm really got to do right now is level this spoiler board. This is a piece of MDF. It's attached to T-bolts in the bed of the machine. 
Fed's got these slots that go longitudinally. You can put T-bolts in them. And uh, although the uh, board is fairly accurate uh, in thickness, this machine is accurate to like four decimal places. It's a really accurate machine. So the first thing you want to do is use the machine with a, a, a straight bit to go ahead and just take a little bit off the top of the, of the spoiler board to level it off. So to do that, I've got a straight cutter bit that I'm going to put into the tool and uh, we'll go through that process. The vacuum dust collection uh, I've got to raise this a little bit. They make this really easy. You put, type the letter K, a little keyboard comes up, and then you can use your page up to raise that. You can use your right key to bring it over to where you can do some work, and your up key to, to bring it back in the Y direction. So, this little dust boot's held on by magnets. It's really kind of cool. And here's the, the bit. And what I'll do is I'll take that bit out and I'll put this straight bit in. The bit I have in right now is a 90 degree V bit so I can mark very carefully where, uh, where, where my uh, zero, zero point is on this. Because think of this as like a piece of graph paper with axis, an X axis and a Y axis with a zero, zero point. I went ahead and marked that and I had the tool cut a V down the x-axis and up the y-axis at zero, 00 so that later on it can make it a little easier to line up my work on this axis. So they give you a couple of wrenches and you simply well maybe not that simple I gotta get good at this. Okay, you just loosen your collet. Take the bit out. And they tell you every time you replace a bit, you take your collet apart and just tap it out. Make sure no sawdust gets in there because the accuracy of the machine is based on how well this collet can hold your your tool. So I'll go ahead and just put that tool aside, put my straight bit in all the way up, use the whole collet, and go ahead and screw this in. This is just like a router. Uh, I bought the machine that actually has what they call a spindle. A spindle is just an expensive router. It's got better bearings in it, and then it'll last longer and it goes faster, but you can get these tools and use a regular uh, quarter cable router on them as well and save a little bit of money if, uh, you know, if, if that's necessary. And then they tell you not to use the Gorilla Grip on this, but just to snug up the collet, put my tool away, there I am. Now, I just changed the tool. The system no longer knows where the zero height is because this tool is longer than the last one I put on. So I've got to zero this in height before I do anything else. They give you this little zero plate. It's an electrical, it's a, it's a metal plate, and you connect an alligator clip to the collet and the machine, when I tell it to, it's going to come down and just touch the plate and electrically it knows it's at the top of that plate and it says, okay, I know how thick the plate is so I know what zero is. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that routine and that is called it's called the C2, Z, zero Z axis with zero plate. Pretty descriptive. Go ahead and tell it to do that. It's going to ask me, do I have my plate in the right place? I say, yeah. It gives me a little warning. See how 
it stops as soon as it hits the plate. You have to kind of come in and double check to make sure it got the right measurement. Bingo, there you go. Okay, it now knows it's at the zero point where that is. And then take your alligator clip off before you start the machine or you'll be sorry. Okay, we're all zeroed now. It, it gives me a reminder, tells me to put the alligator clip away. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and raise this up again so I can put the dust boot on. So I'm going to open the keypad, page up, put my dust boot on. And now, they've got a special routine for surfacing the table. It's under the tools menu, it's called Table Surfacer. So we'll go ahead and we'll open that up. And it's asking me a few questions. I've got to fill in the table size. So I've got a table that is uh, 40 or 24 inches wide. And the depth is 18. Now they want to know the bit diameter. And in this case, the bit diameter is a one half inch. Okay, they want to know the bit overlap percentage now. And uh, since uh, it's a straight bit, you know, I don't need to overlap a whole lot. Uh, their recommendation is 10%. That sounds pretty good. That means, you know, the bit moves almost a full half inch each time, but uh, leaves a little bit of overlap. Okay, it wants to know my starting point. I'm going to start in the corner down there and the cutting direction clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to go ahead and check everything one more time. Make sure it looks good. A depth of cut. It asked me the depth of cut. Uh, they've got a, a ten thousandths in there as the uh, as as their you know their their uh, default. Let's go ahead and try it. See how that works. I can always run this again if it, if that's not enough. And a corner starting point down here, lower left hand corner, clockwise rotation. Okay, they give me another shield to put on here. Now you can't really see a whole lot now because you're all covered up, but that's fine. Turn on my vacuum. Okay, I've loaded the park file. Well, flat the top. So I'll bring the camera in close. Okay, you can see I made some lines on the old surface and you can see how it's cutting the new surface and it's just the slightest little lift there. Uh, I can feel that the lip is not quite as much on this side as it is on this side so it was necessary to flatten the board. Once this is done I'll have a, a surface that's perfectly uh, flat and perpendicular to the uh, axis of the, of the spindle which means that if I cut something to 5,000 depth over here and then I cut the same thing 5,000 depth over here it'll be the same. Just going to go ahead and hit the spate or hit the resume. seems to be working very well.
And there you are. You've just witnessed the very first time I've used this machine. No rehearsal. Uh, just went ahead and uh, followed the instructions and it worked great. Uh, in future videos we'll be uh, going through how to make uh, various projects uh, so you can just see how versatile this machine is.